Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of all the changes that we've made um, since the introduction of WHS into the Intelligent Golf IG member app. So just to uh, uh, sort of like summarize what we're going to go through, we're going to go through the handicap record and the associated page within that. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the difference between a non-return and a not started hole. Um, there's been some confusion and the um, club admins uh, and ourselves uh, would like to give you a very thorough demonstration of what the difference is. Um, general play score and how to enter a general play score in the IG member app um, and all the different processes for it. Um, how to enter a competition scorecard when you're only scoring for yourself. How to enter a competition scorecard when you're scoring for another player at the same time. And then how to enter a competition scorecard via pace. So I'm just going to give you a rundown of all of these points. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the uh, handicap record. Um, so um, I'm going to use this uh, player on the left here, and we can simply navigate into the handicap record. And if you're an English club or a member of an English club, then you're going to be able to see your handicap record displayed here in the IG member app. Um, we've color coded um, the eight um, scores that count, eight being that you have 20 rounds in. Um, so all of the scores that actually count to make up your handicap index have been color coded in yellow with a star. And it just gives you a very quick, very easy look at which score, which rounds actually include in your handicap index and which rounds aren't. Um, in the second tab here, rounds is pretty much as it has always been. Um, it's the um, same page as pre-WHS, it's just all the rounds that you've played at your golf club uh, and your competitions at your, your current home club. And then in the third tab, we have the calculator, and this is going to show you a course handicap and a 95% playing handicap for all the courses that are registered at your golf club. So you can see this has got um, quite a few courses here, it's just because it's a test site, so realistically you're probably going to have um, most clubs are going to have one course with a 18 hole course and then um, different tees for that course and then the nine hole courses with the different tees for that as well uh, and then at the bottom we're going to have the uh, the calculator button here so we can show the calculator and this just gives you a manual way to calculate a handicap a course handicap for a course that you're playing which is in a way or if you for example want to calculate your friend's course handicap then we've built this handicap for you so quite simply you just enter your handicap index down here and we've defaulted with your own personal handicap but let's say you're working out a friend's handicap let's see this this particular friend has a 42.3 handicap index and your slope rating for your golf course is 129 when we populate them two values in there we can see that this player is going to get a course handicap of 48 so you know you know that and then you can you know calculate the shots between you or you stay up with points whatever manually yourselves um, but you now know that the course handicap is 48 so it's just a very simple digital calculator just to look you know be able to look up you know we can just change that value very quickly 3.4 for example gives a course handicap of 4. Um, we've also done a nine hole calculator for you so you have your handicap index your slope rating once you've selected nine hole you then have the ability to enter your course rating in this example i'm using 35 and a par of 36 and then once we've populated that we can see that a handicap index of um, on this particular golf club course this nine hole course is going to give a course handicap of one and um, change that value again there let's say our um, 42.3 friend um, he's going to have a course handicap of 23 over them nine holes so it's just a very simple um, easy to use course handicap calculator for nine holes and untick it for 18 holes and it's just going to give you um, a very simple calculator to use so I hope that's of use to you Okay, so next I'm going to talk about the difference between a non-returned hole and a not started hole. So I'll start off with non-return because that's basically the same as it was pre-WHS. And a non-return is a hole that you've um, picked up on because you've taken more shots than you can score with in Stableford, for example. So, you know, if you 
if you may have had a six for nothing or something like that so instead of uh, carrying on you've you picked up and moved on to the next hole or if you're on a medal round for example and you've had an exceptionally large number of shots on that hole and you you're uh, you're basically withdrawing from the competition then you would mark that down as an nr a non-return and not started is a new um, feature that's been brought in for WHS and basically once a player has completed 10 or more holes in a um, 18 hole round of golf that round is applicable for handicapping so for example if you was to start a round of golf in the evening um, after work for example um, and you run out of light and are unable to complete all of the holes then you could mark the holes that you have not been able to play as NS or not started and the holes that you did play are applicable for handicapping. Now you must complete at least 10 holes um, for the round to be applicable for handicapping so you cannot have any more than 8 not started and generally the not started holes would be in succession. So for example you started on the 1st, played all the way through the 12th and then from the 13th onwards you not started them because you, you ran out of light. Um, another example of maybe not started would be if your um, course um, has reduced holes during the winter then they would be marked down as not started um, and the card would still be acceptable for handicapping because if you've completed 10 or more holes um, then you're allowed to put that score in for handicapping evaluation um, so it's a you know it's a it's a new feature it's a it's a big change and it is quite important that you get it right because a non-return will always count as a net double bogey and a not started if you've completed um, between 10 and 13 holes then the first hole that you not start will be counted as a net bogey and the remaining holes will be net pars um, but if you complete 14 holes or more then any holes that you not start will be counted as a net par so you can see it's quite a difference on your um, your handicap um, because there's a big difference between net double bogey and net par for your handicap adjustment so just be very careful um, which button you press NR or NS as it will make quite a considerable difference to your handicap okay okay next we're going to go through a general play score so um, first and foremost um, you always have to be within five miles of your golf club um, to be able to enter a um, a general play score um, we've got some geolocation for your golf clubs and there's the GPS devices in your phones and um, you have to be within five miles um, of the golf club to be able to enter a general play score so you know, if you live more than that away you can't sit at home for example and pop a general play score in you have to be within five miles of the club to be able to do it and that's just as a protection thing just to ensure that um, you are at the club um, to enter one of these general play scores uh, also with a uh, um, with golf you have to pre-register that your intent to play um, so with general play scores what we recommend is that you actually kick off the round of golf before you start regardless of whether you're going to score the round as you go or whether you're going to score the round into the phone afterwards some people like to use the phone and just put the scores in as they go around the golf course and that's absolutely fine and other people will like to continue to use the paper scorecard system that we've been using um, before and then what they'll do is they'll enter the score when they get back into the clubhouse or the car park whatever after the round uh, and they will enter the scores there but um one of the requirements of um whs and golf in general is the fact that you must inform um somebody that you're playing um, a qualifying round of golf and therefore your round is pre-registered now to pre-register all we do is literally start the round of golf so quite simply we're going to go into our handicap record and we're going to select this icon at the top here which is um, the best we could find to simulate a scorecard and if we're within five miles of the clubhouse we're going to be able to register a general play score and then we can register that general play score and once we're in here then we can select the course that we're going to play on and I can either play on the Walls End um, golf course here, which is the 18 hole course, or I can select either of the nines. I'm going to go for the 18 in this case. And then from there, I can select which tee I want to play. Do I want to play the whites or am I playing the blues? 
play the whites in this case and am I going to play middle or stay up for scoring um, for this example I'm just going to pop in a stay up for score and then I can begin scoring and that then has actually registered the intent that we're going to score now if you're the type of person who wants to enter the scores as you go around on the phone that's absolutely fine you can just continue doing this but if you're the sort of person who doesn't want to use their phone on the golf course and you want to do it on the old traditional paper scorecard with your pencil then by all means do that pop your phone into your car or your golf bag whichever it may be and continue the score as you have because you've now put a time stamp on your scorecard to say that you started when this card was created so you've actually pre-registered your intent to play to input a qualifying score um, so from there you know we can then move into the score entry part of it uh, which is quite straightforward same as it was beforehand um, we can we pre-populate with a par for you to avoid you having to do quite so many clicks and then you just simply use the plus and the minus to adjust this number um, to the score what you had and as you can see there because it's a stay up for competition we've actually populated um, how many points you will receive and just you know additional information there we can see um, our name we can see our handicap index we can see our course handicap and we can see our playing handicap so everything's there in front of us um, it's a par four um, it's just a test site, so it's not a, an official golf course as such, but we can see it's a stroke index one, par four, um, and then we can literally, you can see we've, we've got a plane handicap of 19, so we're going to get a six for two or a seven for one, and then we can quite simply uh, move on to the second hole with the uh, with the arrow to the right of the, of the two there, and then we can enter the score we had for the next hole, and then move on to the third hole, um, let's say for example we we uh, we had a bit of a blob on this hole so we just NR it and then moving on I'm just gonna put some scores in here just to get through to the end and as we go around the golf course or when we get back into the car park we're just simply adding in the score we had on every single hole like so until we get all the way to the 18th hole now once we're on the 18th hole we have to actually confirm the score we've had on the 18th so I'm going to populate that and I'm going to move on to the first and that's actually going to input the score so we can see when we go to the card we can see we've had um, bogeys on most of the holes there we had an NR on the third there um, we had a gross score of 39 obviously we had an NR so that's take our gross score down but we scored 17 points there and then on the back nine there we had bogeys on each of the holes there we had a gross 45 and 18 points um, we can combine them two totals up we got a 17 and 18 for 35 and 39 and 45 for a gross of 84 once we're happy with that and we're accepting that we can then finish the scorecard and we get the option to upload a picture of our scorecard um, and because we're doing a general play in the um, IG member app this is highly recommended that you upload a photograph of the scorecard so we're just going to simply press on that button that's going to um, give us an option we can take a fresh photograph or if you've already taken a photograph in your phone and it's in your library then you can just select it from your library but in this case I'm going to take the actual photograph I've got a scorecard here so as you can see I'm just positioning my phone over the top of the scorecard and I'm going to simply press the shutter button to take the photograph um, if I'm happy with that and it looks all right and it's nice and readable I can OK that and upload that photograph um, it's just a confirmation just check that I've definitely signed the scorecard and it's correct yes and then once I've done that, um, another confirmation that I can then finalise my general play scorecard, confirming I've got 35 points. And that's my general play scorecard finalised. Um, quite simple, quite straightforward. Use the pluses and minuses to up and down the score. Left and right arrows to navigate through the holes. And then photograph and um, finalise at the end. Okay.
Okay, so next we're going to cover um, competition self-scoring, and it's very similar to the uh, general play scoring. Um, we're going to enter the score and then photograph the scorecard. So I'm going to go into the competitions tab here, and you can see I've got a competition set up ready, competition self-scoring. So I'm going to pop a score in for this um, this competition here. So simply once I go into the competition, I have a button to begin scoring. Um, and then I get presented with my handicap for confirmation page. Um, so I have my handicap index of 17. Um, this competition is actually based off of 2T, so I can select whether I want to play off the whites or with the blues. Um, and we can see that my course handicap for the whites is 18, and my course handicap for uh, sorry, my course handicap for the whites is 19 with a playing handicap of 18, and my course handicap for the Blues is a course handicap of 19 with a playing handicap of 24 because of the variation between the settings of the tees. So there's a score balancing that's adjusting it, my playing handicap from, from 18 up to 24. Um, in this example, I'm just going to go off the whites. Um, we're going to simply um, select, make sure the white is selected there, and I'm going to confirm and start scoring. And then it's exactly the same as the general play. We're just going to um, populate our scores. Um, with the up and down um, symbols, the plus and minus symbols, and then we can navigate through the holes with the right and left arrows. Just like we did with the general play. So I'm just going to populate some scores very quickly so as not to bore you with the process that you've already seen. Just like the general play score, we can see that our handicap index, course handicap, and playing handicap are identified along with the par and stroke index of each of the holes. And then again, just like the general play card, I can pop in, have a look at the holes, make sure I'm happy with everything that's been entered, go into score, and then once I'm happy that's the correct score, I can finish the round. It's a slightly different process to the general play in that we finalize the scorecard first on this instance. So we're going to finalize the score. And the card was successfully finalized. And then once we're back into the competition page, we can then upload a scorecard photograph. Now, generally in the COVID times, we've been uploading a photograph of our playing partner. So um, I'm just going to take a photograph of a scorecard and upload it as if it's my playing partner scorecard and my playing partner will upload a photograph of my scorecard and that just gives a secondary verification that um, somebody else has actually marked my scorecard in the competition so just simply enough like before yep so I just need to um, put in the surname of the playing partner here so I marked a scorecard for Craig Custard here. Um, so I've taken a photograph, I was happy with the photograph, marking for Craig Custard, and I'm uploading it. And that's that. Okay, so next we're going to do competition partner scoring. Uh, and this is basically when... Um, you and your partner or your, your, your group are going to mark your own scorecard in the app and you're also going to mark your playing partner's score within the app directly as well. Um, so quite simply, I'm going to use both phones here. So I've got Andrew here on the left and Craig here on the right. And we're both going to enter a score into the partner scoring competition. And you can see we've both got a begin scoring button. And the difference being here is when we go in, we now get an option, do we want to mark a score for someone else? If you're just doing your own score, then feel free to press no, and you can go through the process just the same as it was for the competition self-scoring. But if you are actually going to mark a scorecard for someone else, then you're going to select yes, and you're going to select your playing partner. So I've got Andrew Aardvark here on the right, and he's going to mark a scorecard for Craig Custard. So we're quite simply going to search for our player, so Craig Custard over here. And what that's going to do, that's going to bring in the handicap index and the course details for our playing partner. What tee will they be playing from? 
Likewise over here, I can just select Andrew Ardvark. Actually, he's just there. Look, I don't need to type it in, but if I'm searching for him, I can narrow the search down, find it, and again, what T um, will they be playing from? So this is the handicap index for Andrew Ardvark. Um, and then I'm going to select what T they're going to be playing from. We can see a handicap allowance of 95%. So Andrew's going to play from the blue, and Craig is going to play from the white. So um, Craig, so Andrew over here on the left is marking Craig's scorecard. So he's going to select white on Craig's behalf. Okay, and Craig is marking for Andrew, so therefore Craig is going to select blue on Andrew's behalf, and they're going to continue. Okay, now each person gets the opportunity to set their own um, T, so they're just going to check that their, their own handicap is correct. So Andrew's handicap index is 17-0, he's, uh, he's going to be playing off of blue, so his course handicap is 19, playing handicap 24. And in this instance, Craig over here on the right, his own personal handicap index is 6.5. He's playing off the white tee, so he's going to have a course handicap of 7 with a playing handicap of 7. Once we're happy, we're going to confirm and start scoring. Now, it's very similar to the um, self-scoring, the difference being that um, you can see that we actually have um, two scoring options. So we have um, our playing partner here, on the top and our own score is on the bottom. So um, we can see that Craig has a handicap index 6.5, course handicap 7, plain handicap 7, which matches before. Andrew um, has a 17 with a 19 course and a 24 playing. We can see that's mimicked on Craig's phone over here on the right. So Andrew's score is at the top, uh, 17, 19 and 24. And then Craig's score is at the bottom, 6.5, 7 and 7. And we're just going to enter scores exactly the same as we did um, for the self-scoring. And you just literally use the plus and minus on each of the scores. And once we're happy that's gone through, then we just navigate to the next hole. So for speed and simplicity, I'm just going to enter 17 pars for each of these players and then I'm going to make a, a mistake on the 18th intentionally so that I can show you how to resolve a mistake. So I'm just going to populate these holes so bear with me one second while I fire these in. Okay, so we've got 17 pars for each player on the 17 holes so far. And I'm going to simulate an error now because I'm going to add in a bogey for each of the players on Andrew's phone. So Andrew's saying that he had that he had a bogey on his score and also Craig had a bogey. But Craig is basically saying that both players had a par 3. And this is going to simulate what happens when we get an error. Um, so once we're happy that we've got all the scores in, we can just navigate back onto the first and finish that card. Right, now we get the opportunity to check the scores um, that you've marked for your playing partner. So over here, Andrew's phone on the, on the left, he's going to check the scores that he's marked for Craig. And Craig here on the right is going to check the scores he's marked for Andrew. So when we go into both of these, we're going to see that there's an error on the 18th hole. And that's clearly identified in red. And then we then actually mark that the back nine has an error, so they're giving us an error on the total. So we can see that um Craig put Andrew down Craig put Andrew down as a um three, but Andrew marked himself as a four. And over on Andrew's phone, Andrew marked himself as a four, but Craig marked him as a three. So let's say for I uh, for example that um Craig was correct and Andrew did in fact had a, had a three. So Andrew can simply go onto his phone Yep, sorry Craig, you're right, I did have a 3. He opens up that option there, uses the plus and minus arrows to correct the score, and then accepts it. And once that's accepted, you can see that there are now no more errors on the scorecard, and he can comfortably accept the score. Now, over here on Craig's phone, um, it's Andrew that's got the wrong score. So when he presses on that button to chewing it, it's basically saying that Andrew is the one who would the mistake so Andrew's the one that needs to correct it 
so what Andrew does is he find he's he, okay I've made a mistake but I'm happy with Craig's score so that's absolutely fine I can sign Craig's score off so Andrew's gonna oh, but I'll, you'll have to bear with me I have to do this on the phone because it doesn't recognize the mouse on that on that box but Andrew's gonna sign that scorecard and then save it and then what he can do is he can go back into um, card and navigate into the hole and he can change the hole um, they need to change so he needs to knock that down to three so it matches and score and finish okay now Andrew can now um, he's now sorry Craig can now say you know Andrew you see Andrew's change of score because he could check on there again and refresh and now when he refreshes the fact that the, both the scores match up with two threes um, so Andrew's given so Craig's given Andrew a three Andrew's given himself a three there's now parity and the score can be marked off as correct so Craig's just going to sign his scorecard C and C okay so now we can check scores and sign as player um, because Craig completed his process after Andrew had it, Andrew just simply refreshes his page and then he can check his own scores and likewise Craig can check his own scores if both the players are happy with what they've got on the scorecard which they should be by this point because they've just done a thing if there's an error they can request the change and they can go through that process what they've just been through and correct the scores failing that they can sign the scorecard off so Andrew the pair of A's Craig with a pair of C's for example and we can see that on Craig's um, phone there it's fully all ticked off all, all the boxes checked because Craig completed his after Andrew did all Andrew has to do is just check yeah it's refreshed it it's definitely signed off and that's that so both players have now successfully entered the correct score they've eliminated any mistakes and they've entered the correct score they can exit scoring and they can upload a photograph just like they did in the general play and um, self-scoring so Andrew's going to take a photograph of the scorecard which is going to belong to Craig simple enough same as before except that photograph is a good ball enter Craig's surname select it marking for Craig upload likewise Andrew's going to do sorry Craig's going to do the exact same for Andrew Select Andrew's now from the list there. Upload it. Confirm it's correct and signed. And that's that. Scorecards have been agreed, finalised, checked, counter checked, countersigned, and photographs have been uploaded. And that's partner scoring. Okay, and finally, um, well, I'll just go through the pace scoring so uh, what is pace pace is basically entering a score on a website um, your golf clubs website through your phone so it's a mobile phone version of the website so quite simply I'm going to do that over here on uh, Craig's phone um, so we're just going to navigate into the browser Craig's logged in um, so this is just his um, golf clubs homepage as you can see it's just a golf clubs homepage on his phone and you'll see he has the option to enter a score for um, comp self scoring which Andrew entered a score for before so quite simply um, Craig is going to enter a score um, 
he has the option to select which tier he wants to play off. So um, his up information will update. He's got his handicap index, his course, and his playing. If he selects the blue, you can see the playing handicap is changing. We're going to go for the white. Um, confirm handicap and start entering scores. And quite similar to the uh, IG member app, uh, we can use the plus and minus arrows to change the value. We have our non-return NR button. We have our not started NS button. And then we can just navigate to the next hole. And it's a very, very similar process to before. We're just navigating to the next hole each time. Up and down to correct the score. And we're navigating through. Apologies for the delays coming through. So you can see I've uh, selected a par for that hole. Am I happy? If I select the par, it just asks for a confirmation. It's definitely a par because we haven't actually adjusted anything. If I put something in, we can just go straight to the next hole. I'll make a change. Once I've completed all the holes, I can just check on the card if I want to, make sure I'm happy with that. Back to score. If I'm happy with that, I can finish it. Save scores and finish rounds. Yes. You've completed your round. There's the confirmation my round is completed. Just go back. Exit the scoring area. And then I have the option to upload a scorecard image, just like I do it in the IG member app. So I'm going to upload a scorecard image. We're going to choose a file, which will give us the option to select our camera or our um, folder of things. So just like we did before, we're going to select the, line it up, click our shutter button, accept we're happy with it. And then who does the card belong to? It belongs to Andrew, because this is Craig's phone. He's marking for Andrew. Well, he's, he's taking a photograph of Andrew's scorecard, apologies, sorry. And then we're going to upload. So, and then once that's finished, we can then close the window. And that's that. That um, should hopefully give you a, um, a good um, explanation of how the Intelligent Golf, IG member app and pace scoring work on your mobile phone. Hope you find it all useful. Um, enjoy your golf, stay safe and uh, see you on the golf course soon. Bye bye now.